All right, real quick, I've been playing Minecraft since 2012, and this is a list of all the things that keep the game exciting and fun for me. So I hope you find something in here that works for you. This first one is for the visual players out there, getting better at building. Everyone starts out building a house, but most don't know how to make it look nice. Minecraft is a very blocky world after all, but there are quite a few things you can do to make a gorgeous looking house, village, world, or whatever you want. In the description, you'll find a link to a video by B00, a great building YouTuber, teaching you about form and function. He also has a Let's Play called Building with B00 that could give you some ideas. And if you really want to dive deep into learning how to build better, there are two links in the description just for that. One is a bit like a picture book, and the other is a giant list of building tips. Next up is redstone. You may have encountered this wire-like substance in some of your caving runs, or you may have even made a simple door with it. But there is a massive amount of potential contraptions and machines you can make using redstone logic devices. In the description, you'll find a link to a YouTuber named Etho who makes some of the most creative redstone contraptions on YouTube, including a gigantic item storage and retrieval system called the Nexus, and a Tomagotchi pet named Wilson. There's also a useful resource which links to a lot of redstone circuits and how to build them. Most things about redstone are the same for both Java and Bedrock Edition, but there are some unique quirks for both versions that can make for some interesting contraptions. Do you ever feel like you don't have anywhere to go or anything to do? Well, maybe try playing an adventure map. These maps usually give you some goal or mission to complete in a specially created Minecraft world. They tend to be quite different from vanilla Minecraft play, so it makes for an interesting change of pace. An excellent example of this is the adventure map Diversity 3. It contains nearly every style of adventure map in one. And in the description is a link to a playthrough by Captain Sparkles, who plays a lot of adventure maps on both his second channel and his main channel. And if you're ready to check them out now, there's a link for both Java and Bedrock Edition maps in the description below. You've probably heard about servers before, but if you haven't, they're a great way to share the experience of playing Minecraft with your friends. Mojang even has an official server setup called Realms, which is available on both Bedrock and Java. Not an ad, by the way. If you're more technically minded, you can also set up a private server on Java for free, link in the description, or join a friend's game on Bedrock. And if you're really bold, you can try joining one of the many public surfers that offer a variety of experiences from Hypixel's exciting minigames to the questing adventures of Windcraft. Another place you might find public servers is on content creators' channels. Occasionally, they will provide a server IP for their subscribers, so keep your eyes peeled for that. Think the game could use some new mechanics? Well, with data packs, add-ons for Bedrock Edition, it's possible to modify everything from crafting recipes to block models. These game changers can really mix up things in interesting ways. A great example of this is the randomized drop data pack by Seth Bling, which makes every drop in Minecraft random changing the drop from a block of wood to that of a gold bar, for example. Seth Bling also has many, many other examples of the weird and cool things you can do with data packs, including one called Bling Edit, which is great for players that prefer to play in creative mode. The next one is a bit abstract, but certainly a very useful pursuit, and that is metagaming. Learning the most efficient tactics available is never a clear-cut task, and it tends to change over time, but it can help you spend less time on the grindy parts of the game and more on the stuff you enjoy. However, since the meta is always shifting, I can't really give you a concrete list, but generally watching pros, which happens to be the next suggestion, is your best bet. And one of the best places to see that in action is in a UHC, which stands for Ultra Hardcore. It is essentially a survival of the fittest contest where the last man standing wins. They tend to last a couple of episodes, and in the description you'll find a link to the founder of the group that made UHC famous, Good Boulder Fist. As you may be starting to realize, one of the best ways to find something to do in Minecraft is watch pros. You're bound to see something that will inspire you. There are a lot of new people trying Minecraft right now, which is great and can be entertaining to watch, but if you want to know what's really possible in Minecraft, take a look at the people on the Hermitcraft server. All of them are pros in their respective areas, such as building, redstone, technical stuff, etc. And they've been around for quite a while. They really know this game well, so take a look at some of their content if you're stuck for ideas, and you might just find something you would like to try. Or maybe even a content creator you like. Do you ever feel like you don't have enough resources? If you do, then you will like learning about automation. This is where you combine the knowledge of redstone and game mechanics to make the game work for you and pile up the goodies. What resources can you farm in this way, you ask? 
Wow, redstone, gold, iron, yep, you heard that right. Prismarine, and that's just a few. People are always coming up with new ways to automate things, and who knows, you might just come up with one yourself. Something important to note, because farms are based on game mechanics, they tend to be version specific, or at least work better in their respective version. For me though, when I think of automation, I think of DocM77 as the master of it on Java. He has a ton of tutorials on his channel, and he tends to lean toward the automation side of things when he plays. There's a link to his tutorials playlist in the description. And for Bedrock, an excellent underrated YouTuber is Silent Whisper, another pro of automation. There aren't a ton of tutorials for this type of thing on Bedrock, so you know this guy has worked real hard to come up with all this stuff for his viewers. Mods. For some people, this is the only way to play Minecraft, and for good reason. Mods can change the game in nearly any way they want to, and this means that mods for Minecraft can look very different from the main game. They can enhance and take away various aspects of the game to focus on a certain playstyle. For example, Terra Firmacraft focuses on the survival aspects, while Rad, which is a mod pack, so multiple mods, focuses on adding lots of fun new items, quests, dungeons, and plays down the difficulty of just surviving. This recommendation does come with a warning, though. Mods literally modify the game's files, meaning that if they are poorly made, they could potentially break your game or world. Usually the safest option is to use a special launcher, such as the Twitch launcher, and only install popular mod packs or ones you know already work. A final note, mods don't really exist for the Bedrock Edition, so if you want to try out this dimension of the game, you'll need the Java Edition, which has been around longer and has mod support due to this. Last is my personal favorite and a very unique game mode since I made it up myself. It's called Command Block Survival, and it takes a creative mode item in Command Blocks and combines it with normal vanilla survival Minecraft. I really like it because command blocks are super fun to mess around with. They're sort of the simple programming language of Minecraft. So you can do all kinds of fun things with them from like teleporting around to making custom items with unique effects to modifying entity behavior. I actually have a pet slime that comes when I call it. <laughs> it's certainly not for everybody due to the complexity of command blocks, but if you are game for a puzzle, then this might be for you too. There's a link in the description to my data pack and how to install it as well as some of the videos I've recorded playing it. Real quick, so in the description I actually put a bonus link, which isn't really something to do in Minecraft, but it is related, and that is a link to make your own Minecraft skin. There's already a ton of skins made, so you can download somebody else's if you don't want to make your own, but yeah, that link's in the description. Alright, so those are the 10 things you can do in Minecraft after beating the Ender Dragon. Hopefully one of them looks fun to you, and you can get more enjoyment out of one of the most popular games in the world. That's it from me. Later. Thank you.